Welcome, my name's Mike, and you're watching the Wooly Bug YouTube channel. It is mid-May 2021, and this is my first wild brook trout outing this season that I brought the camera along. I did some great fishing during the month of April, but now that we're coming into prime dry fly fishing season for brook trout, I wanted to bring you back along. We are in Sullivan County, Pennsylvania today. This is about a five mile long tributary that's on public land. I've explored this stream one time on foot, not fishing, and the conditions weren't right. I came back today. I'd like slightly warmer water temps. They're coming in at 48 degrees. I'd prefer 50, but we're gonna give it a shot. One of the reasons I'm here at this time of year is because this stream I know has a very good population of little yellow stoneflies, also known as the yellow sally. They're very common on many of these Pennsylvania freestone mountain streams, and they require very clean water and very oxygenated water. And when they are hatching, the trout love them. Their life cycle for the genus Isoperla is about 12 months from egg to adult. And the nymphs tend to like to hang in the rocks once they mature, leafy debris, and then they crawl out of the water to hatch. So, very excited to fish this today. Guys like Henry Ramsey and Harry Murray are to credit for talking a lot about this bug. And there are many variations of fly patterns. One of my favorites is the Never Sink Caddis. It's basically an elk hair caddis with yellow foam tied into it. I like the way it floats in the water. It is very attention getting. So I'll put up a screen with some of the patterns that I use to mimic the little yellow stonefly, and then we'll head upstream. A little later on, I'll talk a bit about my experience last season with the eye waders, and I'll also talk about the new Sims flyweight waders that I'm testing this season. So hang on for that, but guys, conditions are great. The sun is kind of in and out of the clouds today, so I don't know how that'll work with the film, but hopefully you'll be able to see some takes if we can get them. Let's go do some fishing, guys.
fish got me when I wasn't looking.
Okay, I promised you a quick update on waders. What I'm using now, the iWader brand I was using in 2020. So let's talk about the iWader first. Without getting too negative, there were three reasons why I stopped using the iWader brand. Number one was I didn't get too many hours on those waders before they started leaking. Now, if you do a lot of hiking, the type of fishing I do, it is a foregone conclusion that your waders will eventually leak. I don't care who makes them, eventually they will leak. It's just a matter of how many hours you can get out of them. I didn't get many out of the eye wader. The other thing was, for the type of fishing I do, the breathability was not good. If I walked three to four miles, the amount of sweat that I was building up inside the wader was not acceptable, and it was very uncomfortable. The material was very stretchable, it was flexible, I like that, but it didn't have the breathability. The third reason, which kind of ties to the first, which is if you get a leak, what's the sustainable process to repair the product? I tried reaching out to iWader through their website via email, didn't get any response. So I'm not really sure what the situation is there, but they could not demonstrate to me that they had a sustainable process to repair or replace the wader, which I think is important, especially in a cheaper wader. So, that's why I moved on. Now, as luck would have it, Sims waiter designers were busy making this product I'm wearing right now. This is the new Sims flyweight waiter. And this waiter is an addition to an already expanded product line. So you have flyweight boots, you have flyweight packs now. All these things are meant to be lightweight for walking long distances, and fly fishing, and that's exactly what I do. So I was really excited to try these, and so far I've been impressed. I have about 35 to 40 hours on these waders so far, no leaks yet. I've been really impressed with the breathability of the material, as well as the Gore-Tex stretch, which is used here under the armpits, and it can be unzipped here to loosen things up and get a little more breathability. And it's also in the crotch, so when you're moving over logs, jumping across rocks, going through brush and ducking and, and maneuvering through the woods, the waders stretch, the seams don't get a lot of stress. And I just think it's a great product so far. You know, I was concerned that it might be a marketing gimmick, but I think that they're a legit product. We'll see if I get a leak after 50 to 100 hours. So far, I'm extremely happy with these Sims, and I gotta hand it to the wader designers out there. They also have this lattice work on the front. It's also on the back of their packs. And what this does is it allows you to have flexibility with your gear. So they have a fly box that you can weave into this. You can also take it off of there and put it into your pack. You know, when you're coming out into the back country, you really need flexibility in terms of where you attach things, what you can carry versus what you can use while you're fishing. So having something like this, it really is cool. And I'm excited to maybe try some of those things out, especially the pack as we move forward. So that's the waiter update, guys. If anybody has any additional questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, guys, it got pretty skinny up here. Wasn't catching too many fish, so I'm gonna walk the state road back to my truck. I might fish downstream a little bit. 
caught a lot of brookies down lower but we'll see I have a couple hours of daylight left so you might see a fish or two before the video is over if not I appreciate you watching Wooly Bugged stay tuned for my next episode and uh, love fishing those yellow sallies the brook trout love them